Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome back to the Promise Head Files. It's been a minute. Um, I am Luke, and on the hunt for specials, evolved humans, enhanced humans, twins, and trying to stop the Healy is... It's Heroes Reborn Ricky. What up? You good? <laughs> uh, this is a special, like, just rando episode. Um, it's our 100th episode, what and uh, we decided to do something different, because that's know, a right? huge milestone for any podcast. I know. I didn't think we'd get to 100, but, you know... Because I thought if we were going to do this, it was going to be like just discussing every episode and that wouldn't have got us to 100. But a lot of extra stuff came out during the time. Like, you know, after this first episode, we started doing the Molly Walker thing, which came out. And then Rebellion Reborn came out of something else. And we had the... Dark thing, Matters. And- <laughs> yeah. The Heroes, Re- the Heroes binge as well. The little mini-sodes that we did. So, yeah, it's really weird that we got to 100. But, yeah, it's great. It's quick, too. I know, right? <laughs> so yeah it's been what about six months let me check let me check on the old uh the old oh, itunes Gallivan. uh the first episode was released on the 27th of march wow i know right anyway so i guess what we're doing in this one is basically like we've asked people to send us in their theories and we will go through them but i think also when me and lilith first started this we did that little meet the host things and to be fair me and lilith were meeting each other technically on that first episode as well so (laughs) (laughs) maybe we should go through like a little bit about ourselves and kind of interview each other I guess so hopefully you guys will be entertained and also we had people ask us questions during interviews so we're going to insert those in so we'll start off with Miss Ginger Pauly herself. Hey, I've got a question for you while we're pulling up notes. Um, How did you two become involved with Heroes? So how did we get started? Um, I think you gave a really good answer when you were answering her. And I'll just give some supplemental (laughs) stuff. So basically, I had heard of Lilith through her Arrow cast because she got Kyle, one of our, one of the writers for TV binges. Um, They had live tweeted together about the episode and she invited him on the podcast. So I listened to that kind of heard Lilith through the rumblings of that and then I followed her she obviously didn't follow me back straight away because you know why would you it's weird um (laughs) and then um yeah I just randomly asked her one day do you want to podcast about heroes and she was like yeah why not and then that's how we got started it's a really funny thing how I met Kyle. I actually met Kyle through one of my other uh, podcast partners, Dawn, who mm. I did a Supernatural podcast with and also the Aerocast with sometimes. And she's like, hey, because we were really like, Ugh, Oliver's the worst, but all, <laughs> none of the critics would say it. And so Kyle had written this thing about, and she's like, hey, maybe you want him on the podcast. So I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And he was a hoot and a half and a handful. Mm. And I, we just kind of instantly hit it off. And yeah. So, and then he, at the time it was, the the one before uh rate show ratings tv the one that came yeah, yeah. before that so yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we go way back with kyle <laughs> now at this point <laughs> definitely i guess the next question we had was from sally chaplin during our interview with her so what do you do so what do we do i'll start off with me it's not very interesting i work in post-production as a scheduler so it's kind of the industry but not so um, we just do editing and all that kind of stuff how about you lilith well, when we first started this podcast, I worked in public relations with a little bit of marketing and advertising, specifically dealing with new media. And now I'm a full-time self-employed DJ, and I also still do a lot of do new media consulting with like mostly YouTubers now, because mm. YouTube is my shiznick. 
and the amount of times we've had to do Primatech files whilst you were in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of low. <laughs> <laughs> Which one was the worst? The worst was one of the Rebellion Reborn of the Dark Matters because we did it once. I think it was when we watched it. We watched it with the... You could hear it. Yeah. yeah. And we had to redo it again. I think we did it like three times. And I think that was one of the points where I was like, Lilith must hate me. Because I was, because I'm such a perfectionist with the podcast. So I'm like, oh, this is a bit too loud. You can't really hear you, Lilith. And Lilith's just like, you know what? It doesn't matter my, my, my opinions. I was like, Lilith, come on. <laughs> All the while, she's just like, I don't want to have to do this again. <laughs> no, but it's okay. That actually, like, I came out with a better workflow for mm. uh, if I ever had to edit. So that, that actually worked out for me. Oh, so yeah. Yay. Yay me. Anyway, what did you think about the first couple of episodes of Primatech Files? Oh man, we were stiff, but we were still yeah. just getting to know each other. Yeah. And plus, it's like like the Southgate Media Group network of podcasts is like really PG, mm. and we kind of pushed the PG thirteen. Let's just oh, be really definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think with those two kind of things, but like I think by like the fourth or fifth episode, we really were on a roll and really yeah. coalesced and congealed. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had like a lot of my friends from work like who've listened to it. Like I think I had some of them even like edit it because i work at an audio uh, we have audio and they were like ricky the amount of times you have that awkward laugh and i was like yeah i know it's like really bad isn't it and it, it, it was one of those things but i think once we got to the second season as in like the actual second season and we changed the 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 way that we did the episodes i think that's when we started hitting the ground running obviously we started it, it took i think it took us a while to kind of get in the the groove with each other but yeah, I'll never forget the first thing you said to me on on uh, Skype before we literally started the the podcast, which was which was something along the lines of "I'm sorry about my voice," and I was like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> I said that's all my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what did you know, if anything, about your co-host? So, what did you know about me? Nothing really, I'm guessing. No, I knew that you wrote reviews. I actually read a lot of them, and then also you sent in something to the Flash podcast. <laughs> Yeah. And so I knew I knew a little bit about you, but I wasn't going to be a creeper. I was just going to let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I obviously knew you from when you started working with Kyle or not when Kyle came on. That's when I first kind of heard the rumblings about the Lilith Hellfire. And um, yeah, I listened to a couple of the podcasts and it wasn't really until I got involved with the SMG that we started to get to know each other, I guess. So, yeah. Did you honestly think we'd ever get to 100 no, I'm really surprised we did. Like like I said, all these little extra things came up and then the interviews came up and I was just like, okay, extra content, <laughs> I yes! <know. laughs> so I, I really am shocked that we got to 100. Um, but anyway, so let's start off with you, Lilith. Why did you first get into podcasting? Okay, so I am a like comic book geek, like literally like old school, golden age comic book geek. And uh, the first podcast that I ever did was Tales of a Small Town Nothing. You will never find it on the <laughs> internet. I scoured it off of it. It was when I was in high school. Smallville came out when I was in high school. Okay. And um, I did it all through high school. I took one break because I was in college. And then I got to work on Smallville. So I took another break. But when I was done with it, I came back. And so I podcasted all about Smallville. All ten, well, 10 seasons. <laughs> really eight. Was it so, just, yeah, but it's awful. It was awful. Was it just you or did you have a co-host? <laughs> it was me and my friends from okay. high school and college. And he just wanted, like, if you ever watch YouTube, one of those old school YouTubes from, like, people just shouting into yeah, their yeah. webcam, that's <laughs> what that was. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. What was the name of it again? Legends of a Small Town Nothing. You will never find it. I okay. scraped it off the internet. Okay, okay. <laughs> How many different podcasts have you actually done, as in, like, um, different subjects? Ooh, Okay. So let's see. I do seven now. I think it's like it, this makes like twelve. Okay, but is that? But that's not including all the stuff that you've you've stopped doing. How many have you done in total? Like, do you reckon? No, no, that's in total. Okay, nice. Cool. I'm still doing Eero <laughs> for the time being. Is that is that still on the list of maybe maybe not? Next, I, I'm really trying to find another co-host because, like, I don't know. I'm just not like if I don't feel the show anymore. I, I just I have gotten to the point where I'm just not gonna do it. I think somebody deserves somebody that's passionate about it instead of always kind of like very negative and like kind of from an industry standpoint critiquing it. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do another podcast with me? I'm just gonna put Ricky on this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I just think like just the amount of effort I put into Primatech files and. The amount of like 
Oh, time. you want to wait another five years to try to reboot this sucker? <laughs> exactly. That's what you're saying? Heroes Rebirth again. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I have the time, like, with work at the moment. I think it's going to have... It's going to... Like, I think once this once this kind of run finishes, we'll have to see what happens, because... Oh, we definitely need a break. Well, def- <laughs> we'll need a break. Because it's been... It's been, like, what? Nine months of my life, and this 100th episode seems like it's our baby finally coming out <laughs> but yeah no we'll do chuck it'll be fine oh uh, yeah baby. yeah <laughs> why did you want a podcast like what was it about podcasts and like you just thought what the hell or what how did how did what made you want a podcast about heroes of all things well i think heroes coming back had a big thing to do about it and i think heroes has always been one of the kind of shows that i've really like liked too much and done a lot of stuff with like I obviously did the RPGs beforehand and I think that that gave me a knowledge about the show and I think it coming back was a big reason why I wanted to get not get into podcasting but I just wanted to at least podcast about this show and a good reason for me to re-watch the original series and I don't really know why I wanted to I just really wanted to re-watch it and maybe I was just like you know what I just can't be bothered to write about it all the time and speaking is just a lot easier Apart from taking about apart from the editing, which, you know, it took me until like we started season two to actually start editing. But I think I'm getting better at it. And it's getting a lot quicker. So, yeah, um, maybe I think that's probably it. But yeah. Do you do anything besides write for uh, TV binges? Um, no, I had a couple of websites that I wrote for. I kind of fell by the wayside and TV binges has always kind of been not my baby, but it's just it was like one of the first websites that I started writing for because I started on when it was. It's uh, TV binges has gone through, like yeah they've gone through a lot of iterations and it was like TV binges slash show rating slash slash we love TV was like the first kind of it's the main reason why I started getting into Twitter I think and that's where I met like Kyle and Blair and then everything kind of spawned from there and yeah it's it's the main one that's like been the constant in my life for like the past three years three four years like pretty much ever since i got back off cruise ships it's been one of the things that i've been like associated with i guess so yeah oh how did you get involved with southgate media group was it through tv binges yeah it was through tv binges it was through um it was through kyle and uh and blair because they have their own little things um uh monroe's comfy sweater they've got the strain pods they've got 12 monkeys pods um and the pilot Round and table. the pilot roundtable, yeah, the fir- that was my first foray into podcasting and listening to those kind of episodes. It's really bad because I wasn't critiquing them. I was just like, I had these little scenes that I would just pick up and just be like, "This is funny," or "We should take the the mick out of this." Not like you know. And Kyle would always ask me these like really in depth questions, and I would just be like, "Oh, I just don't like the show." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. So shall we move on to? these emails i guess so yes so these two kind of go together i've got mary baker and nadia awad uh the first one is mary baker asks who is the daddy of claire's children and nadia awad says hi can you discuss the silair baby theory the theory that maybe claire and sila were together and had tommy and melina slash nathan so well we we broke we broke down the possibilities of who it could be so we said it was what west alex Surrogate for Gretchen. Lyle. Lyle. <laughs> Lyle. Andy. Uh, Andy. Andy. Yes. <laughs> Andy. Um, who was Kellen Lutz in Five Years Gone. And Sila, we've kind of brought up, but we don't think that it would be Sila. Um, that is total fan waking, but yeah. what if it was? What if that was like the ultimate troll? <laughs> oh, man. I really don't know how I'd feel about it if it if it came out and that it was Sila's baby. Um but then, well, I mean, we're gonna find out what happened to Siler in one of the books. Apparently so, and I think Peter as well. Wasn't that said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, that was said. And I think you know, Tim said that we're gonna find out what happened to like pretty much everyone throughout the course of the series. Like basically, by the time it ends, we'll find out what happened to most of the people. So yeah, um, who do you actually think? Do you think it's important that we find out who the daddy is? It would be nice, but at the end of the day, what's done is done. And, I mean, we're not going to have Hayden Pantier on this mm. Heroes Reborn iteration. So, yeah. like, no, I, I don't. I, I personally don't think that they'll bring up who the father is. Because at the end of the day, at this point in time, they don't really care who the father is. They just want these kids. 
Like, literally, no, the kids didn't even ask, who's my daddy? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, Nathan, Nathan's got hero and what you know, Melina didn't need any Angela exactly and Papa Bennett so <laughs> exactly <I'm okay>. yeah. <laughs> I think if anyone who I would like to I wouldn't want to know who the father is Dad Gifford Gretchen is my favorite by the way mm, I like I like that theory but yeah I don't really know who I'd like, want it to be out of everyone maybe a surrogate for Gretchen uh, but like then why wasn't she at the hospital with her why was Claire that's, alone yeah that's true Maybe it's just like a one night stand, Ooh. and we'll never Barbie know. Got a hookup, okay. exactly. You know she. Hook up Barbie. <laughs> she. Do you reckon? Do you reckon she got like famous for? Absolutely. Like, so she was probably going like making the rounds on the talk show circuits, living a celebrity lifestyle, which we pretty much know is quite lonely for the most part and empty. So maybe yeah, maybe it is just a one night stand thing that happened where the condom broke. Maybe it's all just a MacGuffin. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would be classic true heroes <laughs> fashion. <laughs> Next up, we have Joshua Des Altus. I think that's how you say it. Says, interesting that they haven't released any of the last three episode titles, even though they're coming up right now. This uh, this question came before we knew that there was a finale, but on what's it on uh, on Wikipedia, they said that episode eleven is called Hero Truther. And Mac on set tweeted a picture of the final two episode titles, which was Company Woman and Project Reborn. So I think we can all tell what Company Woman is about, which Erica! which that seems really weird again. It seems, Taylor. Yeah, that seems really weird again. It seems like that I Am Sila episode that happened before the finale, right? That kind of... you liked it. Uh... I remember. I can pull the audio. <laughs> but yeah, it's weird. Because why are we... Uh, I don't know. I think with like what we've seen in the episodes coming up, we're going to start seeing a different side to Erica, but Mm -hmm. there's nothing much. They they want the full explanation though. I know a lot of people on Twitter and Facebook. It was like, what is Erica's motivation? And And how come all these legions of people are following her? And then project reborn just sounds like one of those projects. Yeah, no, but (laughs) it sounds like those things that they, that was in dark matters, like, you know, project Epic and, Project Midas. Midas and all that. So yeah, it just seems like there's maybe they all join together to kind of save the world. And Project Reborn is the reborn world. Next we have Chris Kirkpatrick. There's a, there was a couple of people that um that responded in this, so I'm gonna go through quite a few of them. So it's Chris Kirkpatrick, Gordon Adams, and again Joshua Deletis says um we know that the cataclysmic Healy is coming within the week and and know that somehow Tommy and Melina are going to do their part to stop it. But at the moment, they seem woefully unprepared for the task. So given Tommy's memory loss, I have two theories. Tommy's memory will be restored along with the full knowledge and use of his powers. I'm guessing that he possesses far more than one. You know, why have him spend time in that room at Primatech if he wasn't fed some helpful abilities? Two, Melina ha- has always been appeared to be the quote-unquote one but Angela's statement about not having the heart to tell her something makes me wonder if she's destined to die as a result of all of this I hope not but it takes a lot to rattle Angela but this does let me just say this it's pretty bad when the only three things associated with your character are being bold brave and ethereal and they literally haven't expanded upon that in like what 10 episodes yeah definitely I think she's going to die that's the only thing that I can take from you know something happening to her um or you know that angela doesn't want her to know or another theory is that tommy takes her powers and she just ends up human maybe that's something that angela doesn't want to happen but knows it has to happen maybe only one of them can save the world and at the moment it seems like he's the sponge so maybe he has to take her powers in order to maybe she has to kill her brother maybe that's something Ooh, maybe because Pacelli men all die all Pacelli men (laughs) must die (laughs) <laughs> yes and all the women stay alive apart from yep alice is still out there as far as yep, i'm concerned exactly so what do you think about this theory about um tommy having more than one power and getting his memory restored i don't think he's going to get his memories re- restored because casper's dead so i think we're, he's just going to go have the haitian he can finagle his way through some stuff mm. i don't think he needs it i think he just needs to like his mom knows how his powers work so yeah Anne can tell yeah. And then he's got Bennett, who's like literally a walking, talking, freaking specials uh, <laughs> exactly. Wikipedia. Do you think he has more than, do you think he's going to be able to retain more than one ability? 
I think they're gonna go full Peter Peter Percelli season one. I yeah, really do. Definitely. I'm I'm wondering about why they brought up the fact that he was in Primatech as a kid, and why would he have, like if Hero was looking after him? Why would he let him go to Primatech? So I'm because hoping... Angela, like, okay, so that that Angela from 1999, Angela was like, you yeah. know what? We need to test how far this kid can go. Do you know what I mean? As in, and like, then Hero's they kind of wiped Angela. his memory, but it still kind of had a little residue in there. Mm. Because you can't get rid of emotions that are tied to memories. Are you talking about Hero's prime Angela or Hero's... No, 1999, but she posed as that particular Angela Petrelli, you know? She took time out of her busy schedule in Geneva to go back to Primatech and bring the kids. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then Gordon Adams and Joshua Delestis also ask, is Melina a sponge as well, more like Peter than Arthur? What do you think? No, I think she's Captain Planet. I think that that's a really cool, unique power. Mm. But it does seem like there's way too many of them. Like, she can control the bees and the rain and the earth growing. Yeah. So maybe she is. But, like, because we never got to see what her baby power was. Do you know what Mm. I mean? Like, they made sure to tell us what Tommy's was. But they never really focused on Melina. But Maybe she's the one who took the powers. Maybe she is the sponge and Tommy isn't. Maybe that's why Tommy's been able to touch people and not take their powers. Um, but then that doesn't explain why Hero has no powers. But then at the same time, like, he doesn't use Hero's powers exactly how Hero uses them. Well, she not can't until- be a sponge either because Angela still has her powers when we see mm, yeah. Uh, HRG. Yeah. So. I'm hoping we get this resolved. But yeah, I guess that that's done for that. Uh, Sorry, more questions. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um Alexandra Zimlinski says, so why are the twins only able to be close each other, close to each other as of age of 16? Is that so Melina has a good hold on her power and is able to not let loose if close to Nathan? I think the only reason why they can't be together is because of this vision that Angela has had. Dude. What? Maya Alejandro, right? Yeah. She can restore powers or some weird crap like that. Probably. So she's like baby touch and go. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, if they're, like, it seems like because we've already had that twin storyline that they would have pulled from it. But at this point, it doesn't seem like they have, like, the Mm. the opposite power. But I think that that would be a really cool twist. And, you know, I still love the girl that played Maya, just not the character of Maya. (laughs) (laughs) I think that they weren't allowed to be close to each other because Angela knew what was going to happen if they got close to each other, which is what she doesn't want to happen at this point. Whatever it is, she's had a vision of what happens and... She's afraid to tell Melina, so obviously something bad happens when they get close to each other. They're straight up Wonder Twins, and their powers are going to activate. Yeah, they're super super powers. They're, they're like super. What, what they're is like, super Kamehameha wave or something? <laughs> yeah, they're the next evolution of heroes. They're Evo Evos, which basically means that they once they get together, they they more they they join together like a Voltron to make a super being, <laughs> and who is able to take over the world. But Tommy is. The one who is in charge. That's why Angela is scared of scared for Melina. Done. There we go. Done. Answer. And they're going to take over the world, and that's what's that. That's what what destroys the world, not the Healy. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next up is Fierce underscore Deity underscore X. Didn't see Jimmy Jean Louis in June thirteenth, part one or two. Now the timeline is different. Is Rene still alive? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nice question. That was obviously sent before we started all this stuff. So, interesting, we have uh, an email from Nate Milton, who is uh, Nate Mosaic on uh, Twitter. And something really, like, this this kind of fanboyed me out a little bit, because when I first started to listen to podcasts, um, it was mainly like Kevin Smith ones. But whenever I ventured out into the other world, like, into the world of podcasting, I was listening to uh, wrestling ones, and Nate was one of the guys that I listened to on a uh, live audio wrestling. And the fact that, you know, he started interacting with us was enough for me to kind of fanboy out on. And it was also, you know, when he followed us, that was exactly the same thing. And yeah, he sent in an email and also some audio. So yeah, he says props on your impending 100th episode. I think the two of you do a great job with the show and it's a toss up between you and 10th wonder as to who has the best heroes pod on the planet. And that's no faint praise from him because he heard them first and didn't think anyone would come close to the level of insight slash entertainment. Yeah, I think that's fairly cool. So yeah. Thank you, Nate. You are yes, thank you. 
You are the Godfather. And then he he sent us this audio. What's going on? I'm the Godfather, Nate Milton. And you may remember me from such podcasts as The Kings of Sport or Live Audio Wrestling's Review and Impact and Keep It 100. And I just wanted to send a shout out to Brother Ricky and Sister Lilith for 100 episodes of Primatech Files. Now I'm a long-time listener and a first-time caller, so I got a few questions for you guys. Question number one, who's your all-time favorite hero's character? Now I got to send some honorable mentions out to HRG, Renee the Haitian, DL and Micah Sanders, Adam Monroe, Ando, and of course my main man, Nathan Petrelli, AKA Nathan Pimp Trelli. But my favorite all-time hero's character would have to be Hiro Nakamura. I love me some Hiro Nakamura. Masioka is such a great actor and he is so great for this role. He was awesome in the first run of the series and to be honest with you guys, I got a little choked up. I got a little misty eyed when he told Tommy slash Nathan to leave him when the Harris's heresies, Harris-i? You know what I'm talking about, the, the, the clone dudes. When, when they were approaching Hero in the house in June 13th, part two, I got a little choked up. So shout out to Masioka. Shout out to Hero Nakamura. That's my favorite all-time Hero's character. Question number two. Speaking of Hero Nakamura, I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I don't know what happened. I, I feel like time just stopped or something. Wait a damn minute. Hero! Stop messing with me, man. I'm trying to record something for the people here. Anyways, my question is, if Hero were to use his Master of Time and Space abilities to transport himself into any TV show past the present, what show would you want it to be? Personally, I'd love to see Brother Hero pop up on an episode of Martin from back in the 90s. Like, Martin Lawrence just walks into his house and he's like, Hero, what's up? Get to stepping, man. And Hero's like, okay, Martin, I will get to stepping, but just not on any butterflies. Like, I would love if Hero showed up on an episode of Martin, but that's just me. Question number three. Finally, while I know you both are cold on the character of Joanne, and, and to be honest, I can't blame you, I love me some Judy Shikoni. So, Brother Rick, do you think you could hook a man up with your fellow UK native. Come on, man. Do it Do it for me, man. We podcast people, man. We family, man. Help a brother out. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, I'm sorry for being so long-winded, but I just wanted to say that I love heroes and I am a big fan of the Primatech Files podcast. I hope we get more heroes episodes on NBC or on some other medium, and I hope if we get them that you guys are there to break down each and every episode. Best of luck to you guys in your future endeavors, and shout out to all the heroes' heads all around the world. And in the words of this crazy Rick James slash Dave Chappelle slash Hero Nakamura character I've kind of created in my head, life is a celebration. Enjoy yourselves. Yata, bitches. So, who is your favorite all-time hero? Person with power. It would probably actually be Ando. Mm. Scandalous, I know. A person without powers, obviously, is HRG. Yeah. And that's just for Heroes Prime. For Heroes Mm. Reborn, hands down, my favorite character, Henry Zabrowski. And Taylor, uh, Taylor is growing on me. I'm really curious about what they have. She's joined the Hero Truth movement now. I'm just, yes! (laughs) (laughs) I've made no bones about it. My favorite all-time hero is Hero. So, yeah, there's nothing I'm going to say any more about because, yeah, he is... He's the reason why I think a lot of people enjoyed the show to begin with. And I'm glad he came back and managed to kind of finish an arc for himself that he thought, you know, Massey thought was a good thing for his character. So, yeah. What show would you like Hero to be in that isn't Heroes? I mean, he does a really good job on Hawaii Five-0. I yeah. mean, I don't watch it as much as I used to, but I remember the first episode and I was like, oh my God, guitar! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally said that. <laughs> and let's see, I don't, I think 
because you know Massey has a really interesting like uh, personal like background and stuff. Mm. Like he worked at uh, with George Lucas with Magic and Wonder and stuff like that. And so I I just naturally see him in sci fi because mm. he can picture things. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. how it's gonna be in post production. Mm. I'd like to see him on like uh, maybe if like uh, Battlestar Galactica got another like reboot or spinoff. Mm. I'd like to see him in something like that, like deep lost in space, mm. waxing philosophically, actually <laughs> being able to like affect fate instead of just being a pawn of it. Or the new Star Trek uh, TV show out mm. in 2017. Ooh. It's CBS, so it could happen. I'm thinking, well, obviously, you know, he's a Star Trek fan, so I'd want Hero to be on there and just fanboy out about it. But I don't think there's anything else that I think he could be in at the like that I know of. Um, maybe, maybe Supergirl. That's I, on CBS too. Yeah, I think I'd like Hero to be on Agents of Shield because uh, I'm sorry, no. but you need you need he, they need that kind of. I think they need that kind of person who embraces the powers, not like. You know, with Flash, you've got the comedy kind of aspect, and that's kind of making its way back into Arrow now, which I know you don't really like, but still. But Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has always had that kind of comedy, but it's been through, um, like, the kind of straight funny man kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think Agent Coulson is enough. He is enough. <laughs> no. I think Star Trek... He got Fitz and Simmons. I don't even watch that that much, and I know Fitz and Simmons is, like, the jam. <laughs> Yeah, so I've got either Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Star Trek. And can I hook Nate up with Judith Shikoni? No, we don't all know each other. But I do know the Queen, so yeah, I don't really know the Queen. I was uh, going to say, just because you're English, you can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> but yes, thank you once again, Nate. Next up we have Lady Vice's Virtue. Everyone has a butterfly. Erica was Quentin's, Casper was Renee's, Noah may be Claire's, Melina may be Noah's, Melina may be Luke's. What do you think about that? Because I think that's fairly interesting. Like, yeah, obvious... that was a really interesting point, and mm. I think she might be onto something. Yeah. So, because obviously Casper doing something in the past was able to like bring back Rene and Quentin helping Erica in the past change the future. So, of him dying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Noah, maybe Claire. So, do you think something's going to happen that's going to bring Claire back? No, just because Hayden Pantier has been so adamant and not about not being back. Do you know what I mean? That's the only like if I didn't know that, I would I would think that. Like she's just literally put her foot down. She's so busy with Nashville and her baby and just struggling with that postpartum. So, you know, as much as I want to say I would love to see Claire back and bring it all full circle, mm. I just don't see it happening from a yeah. business side. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think Melina's going to die in this series. Because she's got a movie career on the go, which we brought up. Yeah, I t- we, every time I say this, you're like, what? Yeah, she's going to pay. I mean, because Melina is such bland vanilla mayo, <laughs> like, in the show that I just, like, and it's no offense to Danica, like, that's all that I can see right now. So I'm well, just like, really? Well, she's going to be Jack Reach's daughter. Oh, yeah, Jack that's why. And Luke, I don't think Zachary Levi will be back. Because he yeah. said that, you know, he likes the fact that it, it's a, a mini series, so it's a, a, essentially a one and done. I think maybe he, if we do get a second season and his character so, like somehow survives, because I think he's going to absorb all the Healy kind of stuff and just explode. But I think, or maybe, maybe he's the reason why everything goes to crap. Maybe he does ab- absorb all the kind of the radiation from the sun and then just explodes. But anyway... Um, yeah, I don't think he'll be back. I think if he if there is a second season, he may and he's alive. He may pop in for like one episode to kind of do something, but I don't think he'll be back. Wait so for Melina to turn eighteen and then crank out another set of twins. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you know what? I got a new theory. Maybe Luke is actually Tommy and Melina's father. Maybe he got mad with freaking his wife one night, and he's like, he seemed like he was fascinated with Evo. He's like, oh my god, that's Claire Bennett. I need yeah. the fanboy, and he got lucky. <laughs> Maybe. No, I don't want that either. <laughs> we have a question from English Idiot 101. For you hosts, which character slash characters do you wish was in Heroes Reborn? How would you have them involved in the story of Reborn? Who out of the people who weren't back would you have had back? I think I know. Samuel. We need oh. to connect. Yeah, Since like... we're talking about magnetic pole shifting and all those things, I think that that would have yeah. been really interesting to bring into. Yeah, and I think also with the what happened in the last episode of Sunstone Manor, I think he'd be right at home there in the kind of cult-like facility. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Oh, I, plus, we need to bring back Doyle also. Yes. To help Matt with the puppet master task. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with Ando just because I loved him and Hero together. But I would have liked to have seen him like branch out on his own and them coming back together would have been like something like a real oh. big deal. No? I wanted him to raise Tommy slash Nathan together. <laughs> but maybe he got to raise like Melina. Imagine like they both went back in time and they were like, we have to split these kids up. And then they both looked at each other and just had a little tear as they walked away. And then when Tommy and Melina got back, they like saw each other and hugged each other. Like in that, um, that one episode where they, they'd been away from each other for a while. Do you remember? Yeah. We came yeah. Back from that, uh, that side quest with uh, David Anders. Yeah. In, no, no, it wasn't. I think it was um, when they found the sword. When they got the sword from the vault the first time and he turned up in the police Oh, unit. yeah, with the yeah. police uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Carlos has a power similar to intu- intuitive aptitude? He just wasn't aware of it. That's what we said when we first saw it. But, like, yeah. honestly, I feel like he's a human. And I think that that's okay. I don't think everybody yeah. on the show needs to have a power because, like Tim says, the name of the show is Heroes, not Superpowers. Yeah. I also think when he first said that thing about how the car could be fixed, I thought, oh, he's going to be the new sila or have the sila power and then as it went on i just thought oh maybe he has that kind of forge style power where you know he can build anything he can think of he can build because you know he made the the vengador machine and the vengador 2.0 iron man suit really quickly but yeah i really like the idea that he's just a normal human and he's trying to atone for his uh his cowardice basically basically yeah copy of clark clara says all-time favorite episode of Heroes Reborn, June 13th, part one and two of Heroes Prime. That's a toughie, but I will just say Company Man. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Collision, I believe that is. The one where Future Hero makes a, uh, his appearance for the first time. Because I've said this numerous times, that's when I got invested in the show. And I'll go with Five Years Forward as well, or Five Years Gone, because they are both great episodes. Heroes Reborn, yeah, I've got to go with one and two of the old... Uh, I think the premiere was so beautiful for the yeah, fans, like for, for the, the original fans. Yeah. But I, like I said, I don't think that it did any favors with the new viewers. Mm. Next up, we have Sinzia 667. Please find out what happened to Sila. We can't. But There's uh, a book coming. We'll let you know as soon as the book's out. Is the book about him? I don't think. Yeah. Which well, I mean, it, it tells us what happens. I thought, and the rest of the books are getting dumped November 20th, by the way. I don't know yeah. if you know that. At least that's what it says on my Amazon, mm-hmm. that I can pre-order them all to be available November 20th. Okay. I think destroy, is that destroy the, save the cheerleader, destroy the world, goes on about her, goes on about Claire. So, yeah. Yeah. And then there's one, they said that we find out what happens to Peter in the books too, so. Okay. Um, Still haven't read those. They still haven't come out over here. Yeah. Poor guy. I mean, I've only got the Brave New World, so. Well, you're going to have to periscope a reading for me. Um, like, okay. I'm going to periscope the, the comics for you. Next up, we have T. Blessed Stanley says, Question about continuity. Why hasn't Tommy slash Nathan absorbed anyone else's ability yet? He's been around Casper, exactly. Luke, Melina, and even been grabbed by Harris. Exactly. Okay, so the first two times he absorbed powers was when he was a baby. He had no control over it. So that's why I think he hasn't... I think, And I think he's learned how to even with this memory song it's like damn it why'd you put a wrench in my theory i know right um well because when peter had it he could consciously choose to take the powers there was only one time where he accidentally took a power which was emma so yeah i don't yeah eyebrows exactly maybe it was the eyebrows that did it i i just think he's learned how to control his powers and i think maybe with his memories like back at original thing he just didn't know he had it so that's why maybe you know him using his powers was him you know he has to touch himself maybe he just absorbs himself all the time a divinal song insert here (laughs) next up was that rene or was he another shapeshifter theory rene is still alive noah delivered a near fatal shot so he passed out from shock or blood loss kind of like when noah was shot by rene on the bridge um i think it's fair to say that Renee's still alive I think with Casper being used to, to to erase the memories instead of Rene that kind of butterflied him out but, yeah oh, but then it like gets all confusing because like why would he try and kill him in the original timeline oh, I don't know anyway my my mind hurts 
Battle of the Minds at Sunstone Manor between Matt and Rene. Rene wins because power dampening. Taylor finds, frees Francis, who goes Siler on Matt. <laughs> Carlos frees Nazim, and they shut down the manor. A lot of wishful thinking, I know. That's his theory about what happens at Sunstone Manor. I don't think so. I think what's going to happen at Sunstone Manor is Farah, Carlos, Jose, and Micah are all going to team up to make a, a new super team, a new hero truther team. How about you? What do you think is going to happen at Sunstone? I say they burn it to the ground and then all the Evos revolt and tear those people in yellow shirts apart. Do you think Matt's going to get redemption or is he going to go out like a bad guy? He's going to go out like a bad boss. Nice. Cool. And then Baby Parkman is going to like be in the second one seeking revenge. He's yeah. going to be like <laughs> evil mask. <laughs> just taking everyone's powers and stabbing them oh and congratulations on episode 100 major milestone yata thank you oh my god that's how we should have opened the episode yata! next up soft underscore guitar says would you like a remake of heroes if they ever did one or would you rather a sequel to heroes reborn you know what i would want a remake yep. do over hmm. i think i'd like them to carry on heroes reborn but as an anthology Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to ask somebody about that. Ooh. We totally need a, re- a complete reboot. Like if yes. this one, if we can't get a second season of Heroes Reborn, I think they should try a reboot. Yeah, maybe what happened because it's weird. Like some of the pictures I've seen of the rap photos, they've gone back to Union Wells, and there's a picture of Claire in like a thing. So it seems like. I don't know if they're re- going to reboot the show at the end of it. Like, obviously, the last episode is called Project Reborn. Maybe they just go back in time and stop one thing from happening, which stops everything from happening. Like, maybe. They stop Siler from being born. Yeah. And then. <laughs> that's what happened to him. I'm a genius. And then Heroes Rebooted comes about. And that's, you know, basically everything from season one to four, all done the same, only without Siler and how he changed everything. And then that ends with. Um, Heroes Rebooted Reborn, which comes back and has them go back and bring Sylar back to life. Yeah. <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> the everlasting circle of Heroes Reborn slash Heroes. It's the Oros Boros. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Fall for Callum. Is Claire really dead? Because I don't think I can live with that. Um, sorry, baby. Sorry. Yes. Want a hug? She's dead. Sorry, mate. Deal with it. But she's alive on Nashville. So, you know, watch Nashville. But also watch Heroes Reborn because we need the viewers. Next up, on Heroes Fan Unite, I asked a question which was, if Sylar was to return, would you be okay with the character being played by another actor? Give reasons. And I also did that on um, on the Twitter via polls. And with 31 votes, um, there was a 39 to 61 in favour of no. So basically people want Zachary back, at least on Twitter. But um, I also got the reasons, which was, this is from Ships Abound, so conflicted. On one hand, shapeshifting Siler, trying to start a new life. On the other hand, Siler, baby, theory. Siler. <laughs> Siler. Um, X Simran Sandu X says, yes, only if they could make it work slash provide an explanation, like he got stuck in someone else's body or something. Well, he did have the power of shapeshifting, so he could just shapeshift into someone else he got stuck that way because that happened to him once. yes exactly dragon mckelroy says no i have seen zachary quinto in multiple things since heroes but he will always be silent to me even in the slap that was me yes especially in the slap <laughs> danny mac and cheese says zachary quinto owns Sila, meaning that he knew this character and created him no one else can top that but i'm not saying someone else couldn't try i just never got used to someone else playing someone else's character and T. Bless Stanley said only if it was Francis because he does it pretty well. Besides, seeing Spock kill that much would be too much to handle. So, what do you think about someone coming back to play to play Siler? Um, I think that the character of Siler needs to be retired. Yeah. Um, I think I do agree that Zachary Quinto totally owns Siler. Mm. Um, nobody else could even come close to filling those boots or those eyebrows. So why even try? Hmm. It's controversial, I know, but I had my fill of Siler in seasons one to four. So I'm glad that they haven't brought him back. But I think if they did bring him back, I would prefer it to be with someone else. Maybe not going under the Siler name, maybe going under the Gabriel Gray name. Hopefully people can distinguish between those two characters. So, yeah. Next up, I same thing again on the HFU boards. I said, if Heroes Reborn got another season, would you prefer them to go with a continuation of the current story or the anthology route? If you think 
the anthology route. What stories would you like to see? Personally, I'd love to go the anthology route with and see a season based on the founders and the formation of the group. Plus, you know, there's six founders we know nothing about. Or a story about the vault from season two and the stories of all the things in there. Maybe they get stolen and the company agents are tasked with finding those items yet not knowing what they are. And I did that on Twitter as well. And we got with uh, 23 votes, a 39 to 61 in favour of Anthology. So, starts off with Talon Shane Torom says, or they could do a miniseries about what happened with Scylla after Brave New World, or a continuation of Reborn, except with influence of the older cast. They could do an anthology when Dr. Zimmerman, Zimmerman tested the kids with the serum. So, what do you think of those ideas? Oh, they're all equally valid and cool. I mean, this universe, because we've had so much extra enhanced content to go with it, they can literally take it anywhere. And I really appreciate Tim's kind of foresight in that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm totally good with all those ideas. I'm I mean, also, I also think like with the comics, you could do like a what if series, which kind or not what if. Whatever Marvel calls the what, what, what elsewhere to you. Know. They kind of do that parallel or like go the anthology route and like have different comics for different eras. So you could have like Hero 60s, which goes through, you know, the the founders coming together. And you can have Hero Scylla, which goes on to Scylla going off after Brave New World and being a hero for four years and then fading into obscurity. Next up, Mark Wilson. Season one, they had to stop NY from blowing up. Season two, they had to stop the Shanti virus. Season three, they had to stop Father Petrelli from giving the world's powers and run from the government. Season four, they eventually had to stop Samuel from destroying New York. Current season, they have to stop the world from being destroyed and are running from the government. Perhaps it would be good to go with a storyline that didn't involve the world in peril or them running from the government. What kind of story would you like to see of that? Because I... I think it's all every season has been about the world being in peril and that's why all these heroes are getting together. And then the only one that kind of wasn't about the world going to to do was fugitives where it was just them on the run from the government. I don't think, you know, that there's anything else that, that can be done to kind of give a story. Like maybe those rise and kill all the humans and then it's a yeah. human resistance story. We got Yeah, maybe. Years. Yeah. I think that well, would be cool. Or, you know, we had the founders coming together, which could just be about them starting the company whilst hiding from the, the world, I guess. Or I think most of the time there's going to be a world altering thing for these kind of sci-fi kind of things. Anyway, Mary Barker says, anthology, founders, that is all. S. Rune Emerson says, I like the storyline as it is. Honestly, I'm interested in seeing more of where this is going and what comes next. I think this episode's going to be this season's going to be a one and done um this is me talking and it's going to have a definitive definitive middle and end that's not you talking that's tim crane talking <laughs> i know right so i don't know unless they know that they're going to get a second season within this like break maybe they'll add something at the end to kind of where they can go for season two but yeah we won't the anthologies really... are hot right now though so they yeah. don't even need to do that exactly clint watts says i'd like to see a season that takes place with chandra earlier than season one's adult life from shanti's illness to the death at the hands of silo i think that's quite an interesting way to go him going round and trying to you know break down this kind of heroes thing that's going on this kind of powers thing that's coming up and seeing you know him being brought down by like his peers just like berating him but what do you think Perfect anthology. The second anthology is Bloodlines, and we get like these glimpses into all like because it's always been a, well up until recently it was always about the Suresh's, the Petrellis, and the Bennets, right? And plus we could get that badass Mama's uh, White Snake uh, concert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Khalil Levant says, I like these impending doom storylines that Heroes gives for us. If they do an anthology, I'm afraid that will take the threat out of it. Well, not really because works for whole american horror story yeah and it will be it will be different people saving the world in a different part that's what i would see about an anthology it would be like a different set of heroes dealing with an impending doom and then maybe at the end of like four seasons they can have the super team up with all the anthologies kind of working together all the to red say. strings come exactly together. exactly annette austin says continue with the current story and bring back as many original characters as possible how many more original characters do you want back? Basically, you're just saying you want Peter and Sila back, right? Yeah, <laughs> basically. 
that's not going to happen. Milo has said he's not coming back. He's made it blatantly obvious he doesn't want to come back. Um, unless it's like a big like misdirect, but I don't think you would do that. Ando, he could come back at a push. I think he's he's o- open to coming back. He just wasn't asked. Um, there's no there's no one really else that I would like to come back apart from Ando. Everybody else is dead. I know, right? Yeah. Whatever happened to Tracy, a.k.a. Allie Larder? I forget now. My brain is mush. What, at the end of... She just drove off into the sunset, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah. She um she saved Noah from being underground and then yeah. stayed at a, as a puddle of water. So, yeah. She's still alive. Mm, maybe. Next up, we have Carl Grubb, who says, The problem with Anthology is that it doesn't expand its fans base, and that's overall what NBC wants to do. What's good about Reborn is that they're actually doing both. They could have to go with expanding the storyline like they are. Well, no, I think you will expand expand the fan base because, yeah, you're telling a different story with different actors, and I think people would still be involved like original fans would still be involved or you could cater to different audiences. You could cater to uh, a heroes reborn just for like uh, a group of teens or like the older generation. I don't know, but I think, you know, you can expand the fan base. But but maybe what he's saying is with the name, like heroes of how it kind of pittered into like, you know, obscurity. And Mm. now with this, a lot of people, it's a bit, you know, ask a critic and it's, you know, you got a 50, 50 chance of them saying something positive about the show. So maybe that's what he means. Like the brand of heroes might not bring in what they want. Fair enough. Okay. Lauren Michael Bylich says this might end the show, but have a butterfly effect season with multiple timelines and cast from the past, present and future involved and have the end result be the dark turning of the founders and the creation of the company reveal that Arthur is from the future and end it with the destruction with a glimmer of hope like Claire and Sila having a child named Noah note the biblical reference I'm also noting that that would actually destroy heroes I think oh, that kind of sounds like continuum a little bit uh, I never watched it oh, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's where the idea came from so wait, are they? Is this Lauren saying that they want Claire and Sila to have a baby, name it Noah, then send it back into the past to have? Oh wait, Noah? no, this is Terminator. Yeah, <laughs> Heroes, Terminator. Heroes, Genesis. <laughs> yeah, Gen Gen Y sis. Ray Gonzalez just start just current story. That's all. Benjamin Alexander Hartung says I would want them to continue from where they end reborn in a main tv series but i wouldn't mind either a spin-off miniseries each season that takes place during the mid-season hiatus featuring those stories or comic book serials so that sounds vaguely like heroes origins which they were going to do i wouldn't mind heroes origins coming back i like kevin smith oh yeah and that would be like a hard r that would have to be like heroes after dark like oh man i would really like that but you know maybe they could do heroes origins I'd, I'd, I'd be up for that because the original what the original idea was that there were going to be six episodes six standalone episodes and you could vote on which character you like the best to join the cast i guess right now that's a true anthology right there yeah. kind of like the twilight zone i would love yeah. that actually yeah maybe that's a good good thought benjamin we're stealing uh, it and we're pitching it <laughs> yeah to someone um, anyway, Johnny Munoz says, one, continue the story, or two, founders, or three, Claire's kids growing up. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> no more Petrellis! <laughs> yeah, let's get a new family involved. Let's get the Zeresh's. Yeah. Let's get the brown people on top. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Benjamin Alexander talking again. He says, I'd love to see some spin off stuff, but I also. Love to see them continue the story. I feel, though, that they can't get any of the original cast members back to be regulars. I would prefer a spin-off anthology series, but I really just want the Ninth Wonders comics. Do they sell them anywhere? You can probably find them on Amazon. Yeah, they have it collected. It's like 25 bucks, all yeah. of them. Do you reckon they'll have to? They'll do a new one with uh, issue 31? No. <laughs> no. Stop, stop talking doo-doo, Ricky. <laughs> So, yeah, that's basically the the end of that. So, I want to say thank you all for sending in stuff. You guys are great. You guys came up with a lot of great ideas, and um, we're totally going to pitch them. So, you know, (laughs) free free market. (laughs) Yes, because, you know, as this episode has come out, it also TMs them. So, yeah, they're all our ideas now. Sorry. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, but we do want to uh, say that our uh, series of interviews, special interviews, are continuing. Our, our next planned one is with Zach Crayley. Yes. And hopefully by the time Heroes Reborn ends, we'll have a very super, super special exclusive guest. Yes. And that's all that we can say at this moment. Well, we can say thank you, Willow, for sorting this out. Yes. Um, Willow is the best. Yes, definitely. Uh, basically, I think that's the end of that. Okay, so no shame. I'm not going to bore you guys with shameless plugs because yeah. you guys should know by now. Also, go <laughs> on iTunes and rate and review, please, because more people can hear us that way. Did you ever check the ratings? Did we ever get a review? I'd like yeah. to read what we did. Oh, yeah, I've got two. Okay, so we have one from someone called Criff, who gives it five stars, says, best podcast about heroes. These guys know what's what. Peace. Yes. Pat's on the back. I know, right? There's also some, one from someone called Rib Source. I, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> he says, love Heroes or Heroes Reborn. These guys talk about everything in the Heroes universe, breaking down episodes, talking about games and comics. If it's Heroes related, they will discuss it. That man. That, that sounds so professional. And that man has some good, good writing there. If you, uh, if you leave any... Um, any feedback we will leave we will read them so yeah why not do that only if it's good um <laughs> well, we, as long as it's constructive criticism we yeah. can take it we won't cry like babies too much yeah. okay we hope you've enjoyed our 100th episode spectacular please keep sending in those questions comments suggestions and concerns you can find us on twitter facebook clamor tumblr promise tech files y'all know the drill and please don't forget to check out southgatemediagroup.com our home podcast network where we have over 80 plus podcasts everything from anime to wrestling and anything in between so you know it's something there for everyone Lilith do you want to hit them with the the end tag yes (laughs) download the podcast